Everyone, welcome back to this episode of How It's Made. I'm Ryan Balanchy. Thank you for joining us today. I'm joined by Big Macs USA CEO Rick Oldak, who is here with us to talk about the brand's uh, injection into the United States market and its growth here, as well as what the technology is that makes it such a popular bag in Europe. So, Rick, thank you for joining us. First of all, can you talk a little bit about being the CEO of this brand in the United States, where in Europe, it's it's dominant first. I mean, it's, it's a great brand, not only in push bags, but also or push carts, but also bags, and you're making forays here. Yes, hi, Ryan. Thank you for having us. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you this morning. The, uh, the Big Macs brand, obviously, in Europe has, uh, has been incredibly successful. They are really the dominant uh, market shareholder in push carts uh, and now also in golf bags in mainland Europe. Uh, since 1994, they've had a tremendous uh, presence in developing proprietary technologies that they, that they formulate in innovative carts. So they've, uh, they've done a great job over there. We have been in the US for about seven years. Uh, we've we've uh, made an effort to penetrate the marketplace in a very different way than one might expect. There are formidable competitors here in the US some very mature brands who have um, really good quality products as well. So to find a, a way for us to penetrate, we decided that we would come into the US really with our proprietary technology and, and go in with uh, products that have a point of difference. So uh, we our, our top three models are what we call full flat models. So with one button, the cart collapses. It, it, it generally takes up about four to six inches depending on the model once it's folded flat. And that's a one button push. So you, you basically fold it and unfold it in one easy motion. You can then fit that cart into, uh, into the trunk of your car on top of your golf bag, regardless of the kind of car that you're driving. So a space saving, uh, effort saving, they're ultra lightweight. Uh, they weigh between 14 and 16 pounds, which for a push cart is incredibly, uh, incredibly light. Yeah, I have one. Uh, it's actually on my deck right now, and it is tremendously easy to, to get set up and then easy to, like you said, fold down when, when you're done with it. And it really does not, I mean, I could put it in, in a closet. I could put it in the back of my car. I, I think it'd be a challenge to fit in my locker at my club, but it, it would get pretty close, actually. Uh, the wheels off, Ryan, and put it in. But with one of those, with that type of technology, obviously, you're not trying to come into the market as a value play. You're trying to bring people innovation at a price point that's commensurate with innovation and technology. Of course, we we um, we really want to appeal to the core golfer, uh, the golfer who who plays frequently, who is an influencer in in his circle. I mean, the way brands are built today is very different than they were ten years ago. Uh, it's all about um, being able to virally get your message out, uh, organically grow the business one customer at a time. So we have we have come in really in a very specific way, and uh, and are are attempting to uh, really connect with the golfer directly, so that we can present our message, uh, expose them to our technology, and we think that the quality of what we're doing is going to help us grow organically. I asked this of a bunch of people who have been on this series of episodes about the importance or the, the influence that COVID and the golf boom because of COVID has had on their business. But in particular, what kind of influence has COVID had on people walking the golf course and people using push carts as part of that experience? That's a, that's a great question. I think um, the initial influence was uh, to allow people to play golf while continuing to maintain that social distance, yeah. right? It was a health issue. So uh, people would come to the golf course. They don't go into the pro shop. They sign up online. They walk to the golf course and they want to control their environment. So that's where push carts became very important. But I think something has happened and, and, uh, and golf uh, played when walking is uh, incredibly enjoyable. And I think the game changes from an emotional perspective when you're walking from shot to shot than when you're driving. You have more time to reflect on what's happening. 
Uh, and people, I think, play better when they walk. So we've, um, we've been able to take advantage of that. There has been a global supply chain problem uh, throughout every market, not just golf. Uh, and we've been able to leverage our relationships through our European entities with the factories. And we were able to secure enough inventory uh, in 2020 to help us uh, touch more consumers, increase our installed base, uh, develop our relationships to another extent with our, our key retail partners. And as a result, our business grew exponentially in 2020. But since uh, normality has uh, swung back around or whatever the new normal is, uh, we're still seeing that growth in 2021. So the message that we are getting from the consumer is that our products are, are striking a positive nerve uh, people are talking about us and, uh, and we're, we're seeing some continued growth as a result of that. And how do you plan to forecast into the future? What's to become of the new normal? Because obviously people will go back to the office to some degree, working from home will still be a part of our lives and somehow that'll kind of work itself out over time. But I imagine that there will be fewer opportunities for people to play golf as they maybe get lured back into office life? Well, I think uh, it's interesting that <clears throat> the, uh, the rounds numbers played in 2020 were exponentially increased over 2019. The entire golf industry, uh, you know, is, is grateful for the, the growth that we've experienced. We're hopeful that and I've, I'm a longtime golf industry executive. I've been in the business a very long time. And this, the last 15 years, the stagnation of the sport has been something that everyone talks about. But in 2020, we saw that, that rounds increase go up. We had both new players coming in, players who had abandoned golf coming back. And, and then we had uh, that core group of five to six, seven million players playing more frequently. Uh, I think we're gonna to continue to see that. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, the appreciation of, of time uh, since the COVID pandemic hit, I think has changed the way people perceive life. And, uh, and, I, and, and I think they appreciate it more and they're more grateful for the, the opportunity to be outside. With the, that last point, and I agree with you, I, I think people really do appreciate the opportunity to be able to spend time either with their family or friends or whatever outside, having recreation, having a good time away, and, and maybe prioritizing themselves a little bit more than their desk. Is that meant not only from the push cart standpoint, but also from a walking bag standpoint, an increase in sales as well as a proportion of maybe your uh, Big Max's total lineup? Yeah, I, there, there, there's two, two uh, things at play here, right? <clears throat> there's the, uh, the tendency or the increased desire of people to walk when playing golf. But there's also the, the issue of uh, how much energy you use up when you're walking versus pushing a cart. And if you're a competitive player, like we're seeing tremendous penetration into the golf uh, team ranks. We, are, we supply 50, 60 different men's and women's golf teams in the US. And what we're seeing is that the women's team started walking first uh, with a push cart. We're seeing many, many men's teams now doing it because people are, trying, are starting to understand that coming down to those last two, three holes, if, you have, if, if you're pushing and, and you have a little bit more in the tank energy-wise, or maybe you're a little sharper mentally, you have that one half a shot advantage perhaps that could be the difference in the entire match. So we're seeing a lot more walking in, in the college ranks and high schools as well. Uh, Big Max is one of the sponsors of the AJGA. Uh, so we're working with that organization um, to, to penetrate that youth market as well. I wanted to highlight one thing in particular about the bags. I, I have a couple, mm -hmm. uh, but kind of a cart-sized-ish stand bag and then uh, you know a stand bag and the waterproofing around the pockets is kind of a particular highlight point, at least for me. Um, as a walking golfer, you can get caught in all kinds of different weather. And I've never found myself having a problem worrying about all of my things suddenly getting awfully wet in, in a Big Max bag. 
can you dig in on the, the some of the proprietary nature of that technology and, and why that's so important for golfers? Yeah, so, so when Big Macs um, decided to get into the bag uh, part of the business, again, it's another innovation. It's another point of difference that, that we built the entire bag line around was this uh, dry light technology, the, the fabrication of our bags, uh, double stitching on the seams. We have two different versions of it. One is the aqua line, which is totally 100% waterproof. The, um, the seams are sealed, they're, they're taped. So nothing, if you can plan a, a torrential downpour with an aqua bag, nothing's gonna get wet. The dry light line is the same fabrication, same waterproof zippers. We just don't seal seam the, the uh, seams. And, uh, but you still have tremendous waterproof technology. Although if it's a torrential downpour, you might get some leakage around the zippers, so. <laughs> <laughs> and for people who are looking for a new bag, I mean, there's all kinds of different ways you can go in a bag. You can go cart versus stand. You can go lighter versus heavier. You can go all kinds of different features on dividers and, and storage. How, as Big Macs, do you kind of offer a little bit of something for everybody while also not having way too many choices for someone to get into Big Macs? Yeah, I think that, that what we try to do is we try to focus in on, you know, what, what, who is the golfer that we're going to be delivering this product to? We do that with all of our products. So we have seven inch carry bags, we have eight inch carry bags, nine inch carry bags, and then we have a whole line of cart bags as well. We've introduced <clears throat> two new bags into the market. Our most popular bag is the, what we're calling the dry light hybrid. It's a nine inch carry bag, ultra lightweight, about four pounds, uh, 14 weight top. So you have all of the features that you'd like to see in a cart bag, but it's also in a carry bag. So you can, this bag is designed to fit on a, a riding cart, a push cart, and also to be carried. So, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the base is a patented base that, that fits uh, perfectly on a push cart the, the, the bag is an inch longer so that it, it does not uh, fall short of the brackets on the push cart as well. But again, <clears throat> it's got tremendous features, uh, waterproof uh, valuables pocket, has a cooler pocket. It's really equipped with all the bells and whistles of a bag in a very lightweight but very stable design. I've always kind of wondered, I mean, I've, I've seen a fair number of hybrid bags over the years. And it, it feels like it should be a bigger part of the market than it is. Am I, am I wrong in thinking that? But it feels like there are a lot of people like me who maybe want to walk the front, ride the back, or every once in a while they come to a place where they got to ride and they just want the benefits of the storage that come with a cart bag without necessarily having all the other umbrage of it. Right. Well, the versatility is key, right? To, to have a bag that, that will accommodate whatever method of transportation you're going to decide to, to use. So I think, I think these hybrid bags <clears throat> are very popular today. Uh, the 14 weight uh, divider top is critically important. It keeps the clubs balanced uh, because each, each club has its own cubby, if you will. Yep. So, um, so I think balance, uh, weight, <clears throat> and stability are the three key features. And that's what we're trying to do. And then moving forward, I mean, as Big Max continues to innovate, what are, what are the things the company is looking at and trying to kind of make either minor tweaks or significant improvements to the golf bag and the walking experience, whether that's walking with your own two feet and the bag on your back or walking with your own two feet and pushing a cart? Well, I think, <clears throat> I think from a technology standpoint, you know, we, we, are, we are in the right uh, category. We're focusing on the right things. We're creating new styles. We're already working on 2023. So we pattern our, our aesthetic. It's a very Euro aesthetic uh, with great geometry, great coloration. Uh, we're, we, we're always trying to be both uh, fashionable and effective from a function standpoint. And so um, I think our bag line is incredibly attractive. 
uh, it really it really works uh, in a very effective way, regardless of whether you're going to write on the card. So all the pockets have to be positioned in a specific way if you're writing on a on a on the driving cart, or if you're if you're pushing it or carrying it yourself. And then one last question: We'll get you out here on this, it, which is the importance of e-commerce in, in all of this. Uh, it feels like a lot of golf buying has moved online in the pandemic, and I can't imagine that suddenly changing. How much has that meant to, to Big Macs, and how much do you think it will mean in the future for golfers, particularly looking for a new bag, to be able to just go to a website like Big Macs's and grab one and get it shipped to them pretty quickly? Well, e-commerce obviously is a, is a major factor, obviously, in everyone's lives, and, and certainly 2020 uh, – highlighted that in a, in a very tragic way. Uh, but, um, but I think it depends on what kind of consumer you are. Some consumers really like to touch and feel the product before they buy it. And if that's the case, then, you know, you have to have reasonable brick and mortar distribution, which we do. Um, and, uh, and then we also offer a 30 day playability guarantee on our website. Our products all have a five year warranty so that we uh, we extend to the consumer that we have tremendous confidence in the products that we're selling to them. And uh, I think e-commerce is with us. Uh, it depends on, um, you know, where you like to shop as a consumer. But uh, all of our key retail partners have, have our products on their websites, uh, in their brick and mortar stores. And, and we obviously have our products available on bigmax.com as well. Well, Rick, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. We really appreciate it. Congrats on all the growth and success throughout uh, what has been a trying 15 months or so, but it has been a, a bright side for golf, and it, it's good to see that uh, it's been working for Big Macs too. Thank you, Ryan. Really appreciate the opportunity to, to be with you this morning.